So, now let's go and take a look at um, if we had uh, the division. So we talked about the product, right? We know the product, we can split up and take in the product of each term that's in the radical. Well, does that work for division? Well, let's go and do some easy answers. Let's go and do some easy ones. What, if I, what about if I did the square root of 36 divided by 9? By following what we did with the product rule, that means we could do the square root of 36 over the square root of 9. Well, let's see. What is the square root of 36? 36 divided by 9 is the square root of 4, right? So therefore, this would produce 2. What about the square root of 36 divided by the square root of 9? The square root of 36 is 6 divided by the square root of 9, which is 3, which equals 2. So guess what? When you take the square root of a rational term, you can break that up then into the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. And what that brings us to now is the quotient property of radicals. And what the quotient property of radical state is it doesn't matter if I'm taking a square root, cube root, quartic root, qu um, quintic root. It doesn't matter what the root is. As what that represents is if I have m to the a over b, then that equals the m root of a divided by the m root of b. So now this is square root. So we know that this is now the square root of 9a to the fifth divided by the square root of 64b to the fourth. All right. Now, Dara, when you look at this, you can see that I can now split these up even further, right? Because this is the product rule. So first I used the quotient rule. Now I can use the product rule to split that up even further. So when Madison writes this down, she has 9 square root of 9 times the square root of a to the fifth divided by the square root of 64 times the square root of b to the fourth. And it's just helpful, I think, a lot of times to break it up. So then you're not like overly, uh, overly confused with I'm trying to do the square root or the whatever root of so many terms. So now I say the square root of 9. Well, all right, that's 3. The square root of 8 to the fifth. Mm, how do I do that? Remember, we've got to write that as a squared number, right? So this one's going to get a little difficult. I, let me know if this is correct. 8 to the fifth is equal to 8 to the fourth times 8 to the first. Does everybody remember the property of exponents? The property of exponents said when you multiply two terms, what do you do with the exponents? Add them. So does, does this work? Yes. Um, what about, so, all right. So therefore, I'm going to rewrite this then as the square root of a to the fourth times a. All over 64, which we know is 8. And then now we've got to deal with this cube or the square root of b to the fourth. And that's going to kind of take us to um, the square root of a to the fourth and the square root of b to the fourth. So when looking at these values, remember, guys, we need to write them. Since we're taking the square root, we need to write them as something squared. So could we write this as a squared squared and this equal to b squared squared? All right? So therefore, you know that my answers would just be squared. However, if I broke this up again into a square a to the four, the square root of a to the fourth times the square root of a, what you notice is you can't simplify the square root of a. So therefore, my final answer is going to be 3 a squared square root of a divided by 8 b squared. Because we got the a squared and the b squared from here. All right? But you can't take, there's an extra a which you can't take the square root of, so we write it right there. Questions? Preguntas? Yes? Huh? 3 times a squared times square root of a. I broke down a to the fifth as square root of a to the fourth times the square root of a. And then I can take the a square root of a to the fourth as a squared. Yes? Why did I use 4 instead of breaking it down to where? Oh, 3 and 2? Good question. So the question was, why can't I break down a cubed times a squared times a squared? Well, you can, 
But remember, you can only take the square root of something when it's raised to the square power, right? So if I broke that up like that, if I was going to now take the square roots of all these, the square root of a squared is a, right? But what's the square root of a cubed? Well, then you'd have to break that up again times a, where you could take that, and then you'd have a times a times square root of a, which still gives you a squared times a. All right. So that's another way to do it. You just need to make sure you break them all down.